jam berapa? Dibuka.
Silakan diaktifkan kameranya dulu semua anak-anak. Belum masuk bos kan? Ini namanya. Mana? Oh. Silakan kameranya yang lain onkan ya. Tunggu, 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 tunggu. Kalau saya mau pakai makan makan di rumah aja, nak ya? Iya. Yeah. Lagi nunggu dosen. Itu ada dosen itu. Nih ini dosen kan. Yang lain mana ini? Najwa, Tamar, Jeremy, Ami, Kodana. Ayo, Dek, silakan diaktifkan kameranya. Risana, Hizkia. Ayo, biar kita mulai. Udah pukul 9 ini. Selama uh, perkuliahan nanti diharapkan kameranya tetap aktif ya, diupayakan ya. Iya Bu. Iya Bu. Farid, Rahel, Dita. Nadila, Prima, silakan deh 
di on kan kameranya Esther Baik, kita mulai ya. Silakan yang belum on kamera, di on kan. Kita mulai. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi, salam sehat untuk kita semua. Syukur, Alhamdulillah. Pagi hari ini kita dapat berhadir melalui Zoom untuk mengikuti guest lecturer pada mata kuliah teknologi bahan dan korosi. Semoga kita dalam keadaan sehat walafiat semuanya ya, supaya bisa mengikuti perkuliahan di pagi hari ini dan bermanfaat untuk kita semua. Oke, okay. perkuliahan guest lecturer di pagi hari ini akan diisi oleh ini ada yang bocor suaranya siapa ini? Tolong di mute kan dulu ya. Uh, guest lecturer kita pagi hari ini akan diisi oleh Ibu Profesor Insinyur Dr. Mariati Jafar dari University Science Malaysia dari School of Materials and Mineral Resources Engineering. Jadi beliau sebenarnya sudah ini kali kedua beliau e, bersedia ya suatu kehormatan dan kebanggaan juga lah serta beruntung kita beliau ini kali kedua bisa memberikan e, perkuliahan ini dan e, menyempatkan diri dan e, kita tahu juga bahwa beliau memang sangat sibuk ya sehingga e, ini waktu harus kita manfaatkan sebaik-baiknya. Ya, jadi tolong nanti anak-anak semua memperhatikan ya apa yang disampaikan oleh beliau dan nanti kalau memang ada yang ingin ditanyakan jangan ragu-ragu jangan segan-segan eh, supaya disampaikan saja apa pertanyaan terkait dengan apa yang kita bicarakan. Nah sebelumnya eh, kami ucapkan terima kasih assalamualaikum Prof Mariati salam sehat Prof. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum salam Prof Halima. Ya, alhamdulillah sehat. Iya, terima kasih Prof sudah uh, bersedia untuk uh, ya, menerimalah undangan kami ya. Uh, suatu suatu keberuntungan juga di sela kesibukan Prof bisa uh, memberikan dapat memberikan uh, uh, materi ya untuk mata kuliah ini. Nah, sebe sebagaimana anak-anak ketahui bahwa kita sudah masuk ke capaian pembelajaran ketiga untuk mata kuliah teknologi bahan dan korosi. Uh, nantinya Prof. Mariati akan menyampaikan uh, topik terkait dengan bahan komposit dan keramik. ya. Jadi itu masuk ke dalam uh, capaian pembelajaran kita yang ketiga. Nantinya Ibu akan lanjutkan untuk plastik. ya. Oke. Okay. Um, 
Tadinya Ibu juga sudah memberikan info kepada Ibu Ketua Departemen ya, mana tahu beliau ada keluangan waktu untuk hadir, tapi mungkin ini karena hari Senin ada apel dan seterusnya ya ada kegiatan yang lain. Tidak apa, kita lanjutkan saja. Baik, eh, Profesor Mariati ya, sebagaimana yang sudah Ibu sampaikan tadi, beliau adalah senior lecturer di University Science Malaysia ya terutamanya di School of Material and Mineral Engineering. Jadi uh, tidak usah ibu sampaikan lagi ya biodatanya karena uh, uh, beliau memang sudah mumpuni di bidang uh, material ini ya. Makanya uh, ibu um, sangat berharap anak-anak mendengarkan semua apa yang disampaikan dan memperhatikan serta nanti merespon ya apakah itu pertanyaan atau mau diskusi bagaimana kepada beliau karena memang akan banyak sekali hal-hal yang bermanfaat yang akan kita dapatkan nanti dan dan tambahan lagi tolong diaktifkan kameranya ya selama uh, perkuliahan berlangsung baik uh, untuk um, tidak ya memperbanyak Waktu yang terbuang, Ibu akan mempersilahkan kepada uh, Profesor Insinyur Dr. Mati untuk memberikan uh, perkuliahannya pada pagi hari ini. Dipersilahkan, Ibu. Oke, okay, terima kasih, uh, Profesor Ibu Halima. Uh, merupakan kawan saya daripada dulu ya, waktu kami sama-sama belajar di USM. Oke, okay, uh, untuk... Dan selamat pagi kepada semua pelajar-pelajar. Kita ada berapa semua? 100, lebih kurang 110 orang pelajar. 112 ya, 114. Okey, okay, uh, selamat pagi semua. Um, saya akan share. Uh, saya punya slide. Okey, harap pelajar boleh nampak. Okey, boleh nampak, nampak ya? Saya, ya, nampak. Okey, bagus. Um, Oke, okay. okay, jadi uh, dahulu saya memperkenalkan diri saya uh, My name is Maria Tijapa I'm from School of Materials and Mineral Resources Engineering Oke, okay, I will conduct this class in English uh, If you have any problem, just inform me um, Uh, if you have any question, you can. Uh, you are welcome to ask a question and interrupt uh, during the class. Okay, just just uh, unmute yourself and ask the question. Okay, uh, the topic that uh, I was given by Professor Halima uh, on ceramic and composite materials. So I'm going to basically explain about these two materials um, in order for you to understand further about. Um, about the 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 this uh, two topics okay at the end of the presentation uh, you should be able to identify the importance of the materials uh, you should be able to differentiate different types of materials uh, and i'm going to explain about the characteristic of ceramic and composite materials hopefully uh, you are able to um, differentiate okay these two materials Um, and also when I talk about uh, ceramic materials, I'm going to discuss about traditional ceramic and technical ceramic. Hopefully you are able to later on at the end of the class, um, you are able to differentiate okay, between the traditional and technical ceramics. Okay. So this is uh, very brief about uh, the uh, university. Uh, we are very close actually. Okay, kita sebenarnya uh, kedudukan kita dekat. Okay, uh, University of Science Malaysia is located in Penang. Okay, from Penang to Medan, it takes about 45 minutes. Okay, it is very near. Uh, then uh, in uh, USM, actually, we have few campuses. Uh, main campus is on the island. Okay, on the island. Um, It is a very big campus. Uh, then uh, in 2001, okay, uh, we move uh, engineering campus. Actually, it is separated. It is located on the um, it is located on the mainland. Okay, 
at Nibun Tebal. So this is the view. If you look at the view um, for the uh, at the right side, the bottom one, that is the engineering campus. It is on the um, mainland. Okay, so this is a big view about the campus. Uh, we have uh, six uh, engineering school. Uh, we call it a school. We do not call it as faculty. Uh, but we have six engineering schools in uh, engineering campus. Um, these are the view in the campus. Okay, so uh, School of Materials and Mineral Resources Engineering, we offered um, Bachelor of Engineering uh, duration for four years. So we offered Materials Engineering, Mineral Resources Engineering and Polymer Engineering. Okay, so all these uh, program have been accredited by Board of Engineer Malaysia and it is recognized under Washington Accord. Okay, so um, the four, the, the uh, apart from undergraduate study, we have also master, okay, uh, MSc. Uh, for we also have MSc for uh, mixed mode. We call it as mixed mode, where uh, we have a mix between coursework and also research. Uh, if you do it full time, you can complete within a year. Okay, you can obtain this um, master ataupun sarjana. Uh, within uh, one year. Okay, satu tahun uh, sudah dapat uh, master in materials engineering. And then we also have master by research. Okay, just now uh, that is master by coursework. Uh, we call it as mixed mode, coursework and research. Uh, and then we also have master in materials engineering, mineral and also polymer, also PhD. Okay, so if you are interested, you can um, apply Okay, and then join us here in University of Science Malaysia because we are very near. Okay, we are very close uh, between Penang and uh, Medan, very near, about 45 minutes. Like uh, if from Penang traveling to Kuala Lumpur also it takes about 45 minutes. Okay, so it is very near. Then it is advantage for you if you can uh, join us here in University of Science Malaysia. Okay, so I go to the topic. Okay, this is about introduction to materials. So what is material? Material is substances uh, from which something is composed. Okay, so that means um, material is uh, something that uh, it exists naturally or we can uh, synthesize. Okay, that means uh, either material exists naturally or we can produce it. Okay, human, we can produce it. Okay, so when we talk about engineering materials, engineering materials is where the material used to produce the technical products. So we engineer the material. So that means if we have the material, we uh, modify okay, the material uh, according to the uh, desired properties. Okay, if let's say uh, we want to produce material for electronic application, okay, so uh, we modify the material to suit the properties required in electronic application. Okay, so that is the engineering materials. Okay, so if we look at around, uh, materials are used widely in so many applications. Okay, in electric, electronic and electrical, in aerospace and also in mechanical. Okay, this is in mechanical for engine, for example. Okay, okay. Not knowledge on materials is very important. Okay, I think that uh, maybe the students are familiar with this um, uh, uh, Titanic. Okay, um, there are there is a film uh, about Titanic. So why the Titanic fail? Okay, this is because of the wrong material selection. Okay, because at that time they do not have knowledge on material whereby they are using plain carbon steel. Okay, to um, produce uh, this um, Titanic. Okay, so this plain carbon steel, it has a transition. Okay, between ductile to rubbery. So what happened is that um, at high temperature. Okay, so this Titanic, uh, this Titanic basically uh, it it, uh, it it is used to transport people, right? 
so it moved from one location to another location. So uh, during the incident, what happened? Um, the temperature or the sea water temperature was very low. Okay, it is about negative uh, two degrees Celsius. So at this temperature, the plain carbon steel transform from ductile to brittle. Okay, at low temperature. So what happened when the uh, the this material transformed to brittle? There was iceberg. Okay, in the sea. So this ship, the Titanic, collides okay, with the um, iceberg. So the brittle structure, the body of the Titanic, which is brittle now, due to the transition at low temperature, breaks. Okay? So what happened? Um, then the incident occur. So this is to show to you that uh, knowledge on material is very important. Maybe at that time, they are not really aware about the uh, steel, this plain carbon steel have this transition uh, behavior at low temperature, okay? And then another one is the um, tragedy uh, for Space Shuttle Challenger. Uh, it, it, this incident occur in 1986. Um, this is due to a very small component, okay? Uh, they call it as rubber o-ring. So this rubber o-ring also uh, transform, okay, uh, from uh, ductile or from elastic to brittle, okay, due to the temperature. So what happened um, in this tragedy, the Space uh, Shuttle Challenger blast uh, and seven crew died in the explosion. This is due to a very small component. Okay, not a, a big one like engine and so on, but then very small component uh, made up from rubber uh, due to this um, uh, lack of knowledge okay, for this uh, behavior of rubber, then this incident or tragedy occur. Okay? So I move to a category for materials. Materials have um, actually three or I can say that four, four um, different types of materials. First is metal, then we have ceramic and polymer. Okay, and then uh, what is a composite here? Composite is a combination of two or more materials. So let's say that if, if we combine metal and ceramic, then we produce composite. If you combine ceramic and polymer, we produce composite material, or we can combine these three, metal, ceramic, and polymer, then we are able to produce composite materials, okay? So uh, metals, there are different types of metals, okay? Um, also ceramic, they have different types of ceramic, polymer as well, there are uh, three main categories under polymer, we have thermoset, thermoplastic, and elastomer, okay? So for composite, it depends on uh, combination okay, of the materials. For example, if you combine metal and ceramic, but metal is dominant, then we call it as um, metal is dominant and we call it as matrix, then we call it as metal matrix composite. If you use ceramic uh, as the matrix, then we call it as ceramic matrix composite. If you are using polymer as the matrix, then we call it as polymer matrix composite. So these are the main um, uh, categories okay, of materials. Okay, so we move to metal. So what is metal? Metal is inorganic material. Okay, um, it has one or more metallic elements. Okay, if more metallic elements, uh, we call it alloy. So alloy is combination of different types of metal. So this metal, it has crystalline structure. Okay. Um, it may contain small amount of non-metallic element, okay? Um, as we know that metal has good thermal and electrical conductivity um, due to the large number of non-localized electrons. So that means there are electrons that can move around. So that's why this metal, it has good thermal and electrical conductivity. So these are the advantages of metal where it is strong and ductile, stiff, good strength, high resistance, uh, okay, high resistance uh, because of the high melting point. 
Okay, and then uh, heat, heat resistant due to the high melting point. Then again, good conductivity. But there are also um, disadvantages of metal. For example, corrosion. Okay, it tend to corrode and also rust. Okay, so these two um, disadvantages uh, we need to consider when we want to use metal for application uh, relates to, for example, uh, sea water because it tends to corrode and also rust. Um, metals, it can be bent okay, when we exposed to high temperature. So that means the, the structure will be distorted. Uh, some metal are expensive and uh, it can be heavier than other materials. Okay? Because um, for certain application, now they are looking like uh, lightweight, okay? lightweight uh, materials because they want to save energy. Uh, for example, if let's say they are using in um, aircraft or, or transportation, okay? uh, when they use in any transportation, uh, they want to have a very lightweight structure because they want to use uh, less fuel. Okay? Uh, mereka mahu kurangkan uh, pembakaran bahan api. Okay? Uh, that's why uh, they like to use lightweight structure. Okay? So when we use lightweight structure, we will use less fuel. And also uh, when we use less fuel, uh, we will uh, basically produce less uh, CO2, okay, carbon dioxide, uh, carbon dioxide uh, emission. Okay, so this is very good to the environment. So this is ceramic. Ceramic, um, it consists of inorganic materials. Uh, it is inorganic materials, okay. Uh, normally, it is a combination between metallic and non-metallic elements. Um, for example, if let's say we have aluminium, okay. When we expose this aluminium to the environment, okay, for a long time, aluminium will be oxidized. Then we produce aluminium oxide. Okay, so this aluminium oxide or alumina is the uh, inorganic materials. So this uh, ceramic material is it can be oxide, either oxide, nitrites, or carbides. Uh, it is uh, crystalline. It can be crystalline. It can be non-crystalline or mixture of both. Uh, these are the advantages. High melting point, high chemical stability, high hardness, high temperature strength. But however, this advantage of um, uh, this ceramic material is brittle. Okay, so I put brittle down here. Uh, but another advantage is corrosion resistance. So brittle is disadvantage. Okay, so I suppose should delete brittle here then uh, brittle should be listed down here, okay? Because this is the disadvantage of ceramic materials, okay? Due to the brittleness of the ceramic materials, it is difficult to form, okay? And also machine, okay? Because when we uh, cut, we try to cut this brittle material, it will be um, a fracture, okay? Uh, bila kita potong, ya kan, pecah, okay? Uh, high density, high cost and normally uh, during the processing somehow um, we tend to introduce voids inside the structure of ceramic material then uh, it is difficult to remove uh, internal voids of these uh, ceramic uh, materials okay so uh, sometimes uh, porosity is one of the problem when we are dealing with this ceramic materials. So if you look at the figure that I put here, the ceramic materials can be, um, uh, uh, can vary the application of these ceramic materials from sanitary into this um, apa tu? Uh, tableware, okay, up to the electronic uh, application. Okay, so there are various. Um, one of the advantages of uh, ceramic material, why they are using for uh, electronic application is where it can sustain um, high temperature. Okay, this is advantage of uh, uh, ceramic materials. Okay, when we go to polymer, um, <clears throat> so polymer, it can, it is organic materials. Okay, uh, normally we group into um, thermoset, thermoplastic, and also rubber, okay? 
um, it has a very long polymer chain, long molecule chain. And then um, uh, in the network, uh, they have normally carbon, okay? And also they have hydrogen. It can be oxygen, nitrogen, silicon. There are so many types of um, what they call atom that can attach to the long chain molecules. Um, it is non-crystalline, normally polymers. Um, they are uh, semi-crystalline or it can be amorphous. Okay? The advantages of uh, polymers are low density. As a result of low density, then it will produce lightweight materials. Um, mechanic, mechanical flexible, so I mean it is high flexible flexibility if you compare to um, other materials that we discussed before, like metal and ceramic. Low cost, okay, processing at low temperature. So the advantage of uh, polymer, uh, 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 we are able to process at low temperature. For example, at 150 or 200, uh, we are able to do uh, processing and produce the products, okay? Uh, whereby for metal, we need to use um, temperature processing maybe at hundreds to 1000 degrees Celsius. For ceramic, the temperature for processing is very high. It can go up to 2000 degrees Celsius. Okay, so when we able to process at low temperature, equipments okay, to, for this processing also cheaper if you compare to the uh, equipment for processing uh, for ceramic materials okay because ceramic materials uh, we need to process at high temperature about 2000 degrees celsius so we need very good um, heater okay to go up to uh, 1000 or 2000 degrees celsius but for this polymer uh, the heater only works up to 200 degrees celsius then we can do the processing okay um, however, there are disadvantages of this polymer, for example, low strength, low modulus, poor electrical and thermal conductivity, and also flow, uh, low flame resistance. So this flow flame resistance is very important when we want to use this uh, product for construction, for example, because we don't want to... We don't want the flame or the fire to spread easily. But this is the lacking of polymer uh, because it tends to uh, burn at low temperature. Okay. So what about composites? Composites are a mixture of two or more materials. Okay. Uh, one phase we call it as a matrix. Another phase is the reinforcement. So when we combine these two, matrix and reinforcement, we are able to produce the composite materials, okay? Uh, so it depends on um, uh, if let's say you're using polymer as the matrix, then we call it as polymer matrix composite, okay? If you're using ceramic uh, as a matrix, then we call it as ceramic matrix composite. So we are going to discuss further about composite materials uh, in the, I think, tomorrow class, okay? So what is advanced materials? Advanced materials are materials that utilize for high type application, okay? So um, apart from uh, the four common material that I discussed just now, metal, ceramic, polymer, and composite, um, we have materials that require for specific uh, or high tech application. Okay, for example, in semiconductor, okay, they need special material um, for this application, biomaterial, okay, and also we have material of the future like smart materials and nano materials. So these are under category of advanced materials. Okay. Actually, the materials that been used in this semiconductor, biomaterial, smart material, nano engineering materials are uh, originated from um, the, the four uh, categories of material that we discussed just now. Okay, uh, Like, for example, biomaterials, it can be ceramic materials, but they modified the materials to make it suitable to be used in medical application. Okay, the same thing goes to semiconductor. 
uh, sometimes uh, the materials are from ceramic, for example, or it can be from polymer composite, but they modify the material to suit with this application. Okay, so um, these are uh, under category of advanced materials. Okay, so um, this is a very uh, important um, uh, important uh, I can say that a relationship. Okay, when we talk about um, materials, okay, um, where uh, let's say during the processing, um, we control the parameter during the processing, so we are able to change the structure of the materials. Okay, when we change the structure of the materials, then we are able to change the properties of the materials and also performance of the materials. Okay, so the structure and properties are very important because um, in materials uh, engineering, um, the, the engineer basically, they know how to modify the structure uh, by modify the formulation of material, okay. Then uh, by controlling the processing, then we are able to produce the properties of materials that we require. Okay. So how to change the properties? Uh, one of the uh, way is to do heat treatment. Okay. So this heat treatment is normally been used. Uh, in metal, okay, to improve the performance of metals or to change the structure of metals. And also, um, we can adding um, other substances or additive uh, in the formulation. Then from there, we are able to change the properties, okay. So I give you example um, where uh, during the change changes in the processing will change the structure and also properties. Okay, let's say if you are using injection molding, okay, injection molding to do or to fabricate a product, okay, injection molding, yeah. So this injection molding, we uh, apply uh, temperature, okay, and also we have pressure inside, okay, and then after we inject the materials into the mold, and then we cool down. Okay, so during the cooling process, uh, you can cool down very fast, or you can cool down slowly. Okay, kita boleh sejukkan dengan cepat ataupun kita sejukkan dengan perlahan. If let's say uh, we uh, se kalau kalau katalah kita sejukkan dengan perlahan, uh, kita akan bagi masa kepada uh, polymer. Okay, in this case, if we, if you are using polymer, we give time for polymer to uh, align, okay. It takes time uh, for this polymer to align and produce the crystalline structure, okay. So uh, in this example, I'm using semi-crystalline polymer, for example, polyethylene, high density polyethylene. So during the cooling process to produce the product, um, I cool uh, the product slowly. So when I cool down slowly, uh, the polymer chain has time okay, to align and produce high crystallinity. Okay? So when we produce high crystallinity structure, okay, the properties, the mechanical properties are good. Okay? And then the performance is also good. But if let's say during the cooling process, I cool very fast. Okay? So I sejukkan dengan cepat. So the polymer chain do not have time to align, okay? So as a result, we produce amorphous structure ataupun random structure. So this random structure will produce lower, slightly lower uh, mechanical properties if you compare to the semi-crystalline uh, polymer that we cool slowly just now, okay? Then the performance is not so good compared to the uh, semi-crystalline uh, HTPE that we cool slowly just now. Okay, so this is to show that uh, the parameter during processing is very important. Okay, because it will affect the structure and also properties and performance of the products. Okay, so as um, normally I will always advise my student that as a materials engineer, uh, they should know. Okay, how to uh, set the parameter during the processing 
and then uh, how to change the structure of the materials okay by using different formulation by using heat treatment and also um, because the parameters that we set and also the formulation that we use will influence the structure and uh, performance of the products okay this is one example of uh, structure properties performance uh, where we have aluminium oxide um, so this aluminium oxide if we um, uh, change okay the parameter during the processing and also we change the formulation uh, this aluminium oxide can exist in uh, like a single crystal okay the structure is single crystal where it is uh, transparent okay if we produce polycrystal and low porosity it is like translucent okay but if we produce polycrystal with high porosity then it become opaque okay opaque so that means it is legat cannot be seen okay that's why um, for transparent you still can see the symbol at the back there because it is transparent uh, polycrystal low porosity we still can see uh, uh, the something at the back okay but we cannot clearly see the uh, uh, font at the back there but for polycrystal high porosity we cannot see anything okay so this is um, opaque okay so this is to indicate that same material uh, when we control uh, or we use different parameter during processing okay we are able to produce different types of um, uh, properties okay in this case optical properties this is another one uh, if you compare hdpe and ldpe okay uh, hdpe it has a linear chain with less branch but ldpe um, it has many branches okay so as a result of this, uh, you will produce uh, low density, okay, and also uh, different melting point and also crystallinity, okay, because uh, when we have more branches for LDPE, it is difficult to align, okay, uh, it difficult to align and it's difficult to produce crystalline structure. So if you refer to this crystallinity. Okay, in the table here, the crystallinity of LDPE is lower if you compare to the HDPE. Okay, so when the crystallinity is lower, then uh, the properties, okay, the mechanical properties of LDPE is not high. Okay, it's, it is lower also if you compare to HDPE. Okay, and then the appearance of LDPE. Um, because it is more amorphous, okay. Uh, they have about fifty to sixty percent crystallinity, so that means um, about forty to fifty percent amorphous structure. So that's why it is more translucent. But for uh, HDPE, the crystallinity is very high, uh, so they have so many crystalline structure in the uh, so many crystalline structure exists, okay then it become opaque okay so this is the difference uh, between structure um, with regards to the properties and performance okay so we move to ceramic materials do you have any questions so far this island okay silakan uh, tidak apa kalau bis, uh, kalau mau menyampaikan pertanyaan dalam bahasa indonesia Prof. Mariati juga memahami. Ya, ya boleh, boleh saja. Silakan. Silakan. Uh -huh. Okey, kalau tak ada saya proceed. Silakan, Prof. Okey, saya proceed dulu ya. Okey, so uh, what is ceramic? Okey, ceramic um, uh, general. This is general perception ya. Yeah? Uh, products that made from clay. Okey. Um, if you refer to the Oxford Dictionary, okey, ceramic something that relates to pottery okay uh, the origin uh, of word ceramics they're coming from greek words okay you call it as keramos okay keramos something that it means that something that can be fired okay that can be maksudnya uh, bahan yang kita boleh lakukan pembakaran okay berkaitan dengan pembakaran okay 
And then uh, ceramic also it has been mentioned in Al Quran. Okay, if you refer to Surah Al Rahman, okay, ayat 14, and also Surah Al Hij, okay, ayat 26 dan juga 28. Okay, so they mention about uh, clay inside the Al Quran. Okay, um, uh, interpretation of the ancient uh, Greek it mentioned that uh, pottery is a combination of four elements of the earth okay clay water air and fire okay so uh, so that means that uh, this uh, ceramic it is made from clay uh, formed with water so that means we need to add water to do the processing uh, we dry in air and if you want to make it more durable okay then we uh, put in fire okay so sebab itu kalau katalah pelajar tengok pottery pottery cara membuat labu sebagai contoh okey clay ditambahkan dengan air okey selepas tu dikeringkan untuk bagi uh, uh, pottery kita tu kuat dan dibakar okey di dalam uh, kin kau dibakarkan di dalam apa dipanggil ya furnace okey uh, jadi itu adalah uh, pottery Okay, jadi uh, kalau kita lihat uh, in, uh, ceramic material, it is inorganic. Okay, non-metallic materials it produce by using high temperature. Okay, and also uh, because this material is good, uh, it can sustain high temperature. So it is used for high temperature application. Okay, uh, it is crystalline in nature. But it depends. There are also ceramic material which is not crystalline. For example, we have glass. Okay, kaca. Kaca, it is amorphous. Okay, so it can be crystalline. It can be um, amorphous. But if we are talking about clay, okay, it is uh, crystalline in nature. Lah. Okay. Um, it can be uh, in the form of powder. Okay. Um, starting materials. Uh, powder form and then after that uh, we will go through certain process like forming drying heating and after that we produce the desired uh, products okay ceramic also include glass okay in glass that i mentioned to you just now glass is also under ceramic category but it is amorphous structure it has amorphous structure so that's why glass is transparent okay Uh, kaca kita gunakan untuk buat uh, apa tu tingkap okey tingkap rumah it is transparent okey uh, kita boleh see through because it has a amorphous structure okey and then ceramic also uh, uh, glass under ceramic uh, category enamel also one type of um, ceramic materials uh, glass ceramic also Uh, one type of ceramic material. Glass ceramic is that it is glass, but then it has ceramic crystal inside. Okay, so that's why we call it as glass ceramic. Uh, and also inorganic cement type material like uh, cement, plaster, lime. This is also um, uh, under category of ceramic materials. Okay, this ceramic material it has combination of ionic bonding and also covalent bonding okay so this ceramic material it has a strong bonding so as an effect of this um, ionic and covalent bonding it results to the uh, very strong bonding where it require high energy to break the bond okay uh, ikatan okay ikatan di dalam ceramic material ini sangat kuat Uh, jadi ia memerlukan high energy okay, to break the bond. So in this case, it require high melting temperature. Okay. Um, directional bonding difficult to slip because of the uh, good bonding. So the uh, it difficult to slip. So that means uh, no plastic deformation. Okay. When no plastic deformation, then it results to the brittle properties okay then it has electronic configuration around the atomic nucleus then in this case it will give uh, this ceramic material semiconductor 
and electronic properties. So these are the relationship between bonding to the performance or properties of ceramic materials. Okay, so ceramic materials can be derived from natural minerals. Okay, so mineral minerals that we have. Okay, um, in uh, in our in our for example deposit. Okay, let's say in our environment we have a fire clay. Fire clay. Uh, the other name is kaolin. Okay, then we have a quartz, a bauxite. There are so many minerals. Okay, I believe that there are so many minerals in Indonesia uh, where these um, minerals can be used to produce ceramic products. Okay, if you compare between uh, ceramic um, metal and also polymer, uh, they have different properties. Okay, for example, uh, ceramic um, hardness is very high. If you compare to metal, low uh, for hardness, then polymer very low in terms of hardness. Okay, uh, elastic modulus also very high. Metal also high, uh, but polymer very low. Okay, thermal expansion. Uh, ceramic is not easily to expand because the bonding is very good. Okay, so the thermal expansion. When we introduce this um, ceramic material to temperature, it's not easily expand, okay? Because the bonding is very good. So in this case, the thermal expansion is very low. Uh, for metal, low, but polymer very low, okay? Uh, I think uh, thermal expansion for polymer. I think this is something wrong here. Uh, very high actually uh, for polymer thermal expansion because polymer when we expose to um, when we expose to temperature, it tend to expand easily. Okay, so students, please change here uh, from very low to very high. So that means it is high uh, expansion for polymer. Okay, uh, corrosion resistance uh, high, low, low. Yeah, high corrosion resistance. Yeah, uh, this is very high. That means very good. Okay, uh, for metal corrosion resistance is very low. Polymer, I think uh, it is moderate. Okay, um, it is not uh, uh, in between. It is moderate. Uh, metal, it is not good corrosion resistant, but polymer is quite okay. Okay, so this one also, if the students want to change to uh, moderate, also can. Okay, okay. So the rest, uh, the students can have a look. Okay, uh, and try to compare between uh, ceramic, metal, and also polymer. Okay, so this ceramic material, it is used in building and construction materials because uh, it can sustain high temperature. For example, bricks, okay, butter ini, butter banyak digunakan untuk menghasilkan uh, bangunan. Yeah, this is a very good material because um, when exposed to fire, it not easily burn, okay. It's not easily burn. It can uh, sustain high temperature, so it can be used um, and if let's say there is a fire incident, then it is not easily uh, burned. Okay, so this is a very good material. It can be used for tiles, okay, um, kitchen tiles or floor tiles. Okay, it can be used for sanitary wear, tableware, okay, pinggan mangkuk, okay, kita banyak guna. Uh, commemorative means a souvenir for souvenirs to produce mark to produce, uh, for example, something for souvenirs, okay? Then uh, we have electroceramics, okay? Electroceramics, ceramic materials uh, where they produce uh, for electronic application. So that's why they call it as electro, for electronic applications, okay? And also for cable, okay? At the cable, um, if you see that there are something like this, okay, at the right side, if you refer to at the right side, top there, uh, this is very familiar if you go to the um, uh, apa itu, pencawang electric. Uh, di, di Malaysia kita panggil pencawang electric where uh, electric distributor uh, station. Okay, So you can see this kind of um, ceramic materials being used okay, for this cable application. Okay. Okay, for engineering ceramics, okay, they use uh, to 
produce uh, they because this ceramic materials is good in temperature for high temperature application so normally they use um, uh, related to engine okay either engine uh, car engine or they use it for um, aircraft engine okay so they use it um, for high temperature application and also they use in medical application for example as implant okay uh, in dental application okay as joint inside the body as implant again so they use quite a lot uh, these uh, bio ceramic materials because if you refer to our bone okay our bone also is ceramic materials then it is easily to replace uh, for example if something happened to our bone it is easily to replace uh, ceramic materials inside our bone with another ceramic materials okay but we need to modify the ceramic material to suit with the uh, properties of our bone okay so they're using quite a lot in medical application okay and also in automotive application okay okay so um in this um after this i'm going to compare between um traditional or conventional ceramic with advanced and technical ceramics okay so traditional uh, traditional ceramic is something that if you see uh, they are producing ceramic for um, uh, tableware okay uh, so normally uh, the formulation is based on clay okay uh, so contamination is um, exists during the uh, fabrication of this uh, tableware or traditional ceramic okay so um, for advanced ceramics, um, we produce okay with high purity. Okay, uh, we produce by synthetic um, ceramic materials. So that means the for traditional just now we are using um, natural. Normally we are using natural uh, ceramic. Okay, like clay, for example, uh, like. Uh, um, uh, calcium uh, carbonate that we found in our uh, soil okay so we are producing uh, traditional ceramic from minerals okay Ceram uh, from ceramic from minerals that's why uh, contamination is common in this case but for this advanced ceramic because we are producing uh, this advanced ceramic for specific application, for example, to be used in uh, dental application, okay, to be used in electronic application for biomaterial application. So we are using normally synthetic um, ceramic material uh, as the raw materials, okay. And in this case, purity is very important. Uh, we do not. Um, contamination basically will affect the performance for this advanced ceramic so uh, we need to consider uh, starting material which is synthetic material which is pure okay with less uh, contamination okay um so if you compare between traditional and uh, advanced ceramic um, the traditional one uh, normally we use uh, natural mineral raw materials normally clay okay so contamination is normally occur uh, so during the processing uh, it will undergo shrinkage while drying and also heating uh, chemically inhomogeneous okay it is not uh, inhomogeneous means uh, uh, it is it is not homogen inhomogeneous means it is not homogen so because um, contamination occur in the uh, raw materials okay somehow uh, it will produce inhomogeneous uh, structure okay it has a complex microstructure because of many uh, formulation or many um, uh, element that exists okay in the raw materials so for advanced ceramic um, we um, produce this advanced ceramic for specific application so we control uh, really control the chemical composition or the formulation and also we control the microstructure because it will produce uh, because we need 
specific properties uh, for this application. Okay, then um, it will produce better properties compared to metal products, especially when we process at extreme environment um, and also high temperature. Okay, uh, so in this case, um, okay, in this case, uh, actually it produces better properties compared to metal product. Uh, especially when we use, okay, especially when we use at extreme environment and also high temperature, okay. So, this um, ceramic material, as we know, it can be used for high temperature, higher than metals, okay. So, uh, that's why um, this advanced material, when we control the formulation, we control the microstructure, it produces a very good product where it can be used for. A high temperature and also extreme environment where metal and polymer cannot be used. Okay. Um, so the uh, raw materials, uh, as we discussed just now, totally different between traditional and advanced ceramic. Uh, forming process also different. For traditional ceramic, they are using like normal casting, like uh, we mix uh, clay with water and then we cast, we call it a slip casting. And then to produce um, like uh, what do you call labu, yeah, labu, labu. Uh, normally to put water inside, kan? Uh, so they use a potter wheel, okay, potter wheel where it's move and then we shape the uh, clay, okay, to produce the product. Uh, then after that, for sintering process, we use fire kiln. Uh, we use tanur, okay, tanur or furnace, okay, special. Uh, Tanur or furnace uh, made up from normally from uh, clay as well. Okay, that is for traditional ceramic. But for advanced ceramic, they are using sophisticated uh, machine like hot isostatic press, okay, and also rubber press and also hot press. So product for traditional ceramic, pottery and bricks. But for advanced ceramic, they use to produce turbine blades, for example, for uh, aircraft engine, okay. A nuclear reactor, artificial bone, okay, the, the application are really advanced if you compare to the um, traditional ceramic. Okay, they saw the structure, we can use optical microscope to see the structure, but for advanced ceramic, because sometimes in the formulation of advanced ceramic, we are using nanomaterials, okay, nanostructure, then we need to use scanning electron microscope to see the structure of the uh, advanced ceramic. Okay, so these are the uh, general classification where, um, again, uh, where this traditional ceramic been used, okay, it is like uh, whiteware, brick, cement, refractory, but for advanced ceramic, it can go uh, up to uh, using as electroceramic, um, engineering, biomaterials, and superconductor, okay. So, you can see two different uh, application of this traditional and advanced ceramic. Okay. Um, uh, again, the same thing. Okay. Uh, comparison between uh, traditional ceramic and advanced ceramic. Um, uh, students, you can have a look here because it is the same like what I mentioned to you just now in terms of raw materials for comparison between traditional and advanced ceramic. Okay, so this is the schematic diagram, uh, like what I explained to you just now, but this is more on the schematic. So maybe some of you like to see the schematic diagram compared to the, uh, uh, what they call words that I put just now. Okay, so you can compare uh, between conventional ceramic and advanced ceramic or fine ceramic just now in terms of raw materials, forming method, sintering, products and also the structure okay so this is very good for you easy for you to understand okay so uh, the processing of ceramic um, there are a um, few steps okay uh, first uh, we mix okay we mix uh, the formulation let's say if you have powder a b c you want to combine so mix first okay um, and then press, okay, press the powder. 
uh, sometimes we put binder in the formulation so that uh, when we press, this binder will bind the particles. Okay. Uh, sometimes we need to use high pressure uh, to make sure that uh, when we do the pressing process, uh, it will produce uh, a solid okay, where the uh, particles will join together. Um, uh, it will be in a, a close distance, okay, then produce a very compact uh, solid, okay. Um, and then uh, after we do the pressing, we we'll produce a, a strong green compact, okay. After that, um, we need to um, sinter, okay. Um, okay, before we sinter, uh, we need to ensure that uh, uniformity of density in the green compact uh, in order to prevent properties variation. If let's say the density, uh, if let's say if you produce a green compact product, uh, it is not uniform. Okay, uh, The mixture between the material is not uniform. Then we will produce a density, different density in different uh, location. Okay. And also, if different density in different location throughout your product, uh, the properties also will vary. Okay, uh, so in this case, um, we are able to produce a good uniformity of green product by using isostatic press. Okay, isostatic press means the pressure are coming same throughout. Uh, throughout the many area, many angle. Okay, so it will produce a good um, density uh, or homogeneous uh, green compact products. Okay, but isostatic press it is very expensive, and it require high energy to to be used. Okay, so that's why normally they just use like normal uh, hot press or normal pressing. Uh, where the pressure is coming from top and bottom, okay, but at the uh, side, maybe uh, left and right side, there is no pressure, only top and bottom. Okay, then uh, after that, normally they, they have a sintering process. They, they put this uh, green compact uh, product into furnace. Uh, at high temperature, they do this sintering process. So during the sintering process, uh, the binder, okay, remember that we put binder in the formulation to bind the particles. So this binder will be burnt off uh, at high temperature. And then uh, the particles, the ceramic particles will diffuse and join together, okay. Then uh, when it diffuse and join together, then we are able to reduce the uh, number of voids at the point, amount of voids in the structure, okay. So sintering process is the last step uh, for this uh, powder root. Okay, then that is the powder root. That means that is dry process. Another process for ceramic we have wet, okay, dry a processing root. Wet means pasah lah, tadi dry process. So in this wet, normally um, we need to uh, combine the ceramic powder in liquid. Okay, normally we put in water, make it celery. Okay, celery. And then we mix the celery and then we do the casting. Okay, so the casting, um, uh, normally uh, when we do the cast, we put in a mold uh, like POP, plaster or Paris mold, where this POP will absorb uh, water. Okay, will absorb water and then it will left uh, the ceramic particles on the uh, mold wall. Okay, so um, when we cast into this POP, okay, jadi airnya akan meresap masuk ke dalam POP dan uh, particles itu akan tinggal pada permukaan dinding uh, acuan. Then after that, we dry and remove um, this uh, ceramic particles. Okay, after that followed by fire. Okay, kita bakar the product to produce the um, uh, final products. Okay, so uh, I think uh, uh, this composite material I'm going to continue tomorrow. Okay, um, I'm going to stop. Okay, for this uh, uh, ceramic materials. If the students you have anything to ask, so you can ask. Okay, um, I try to answer uh, your question. 
uh, the best as I can. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for very clear lecturer, Prof. Uh, so, silakan anak-anak ada di sini di chat. Ini Assalamualaikum, Bu. Selamat pagi, Bu. Izin sebelumnya, perkenalkan nama saya M. Fadilah Junian Syah S. Nimnya 22003. Izin untuk bertanya, apa tujuan penyediaan bahan seramik matriks komposit dan bagaimana pengaplikasiannya? What okay. is the, apa, the purpose yeah, of uh -huh. the, the ceramic? Silakan, okay. Prof. Oke, okay. okay. uh, terima kasih uh, Fadilah ya. Yeah. Um, uh, very brief, okay. berkenaan dengan ceramic matrix composite. Uh, ceramic uh, disadvantage-nya yang utama adalah brittle. Okay, brittle. Dia cepat pecah ya. Jadi um, kenapa kita menghasilkan komposit uh, ceramic matrix komposit adalah untuk mengurangkan uh, uh, apa tu mengurangkan disadvantage tadi yang cepat pecah. Uh, jadi uh, biasanya untuk ceramic matrix komposit kita akan combinekan um, ceramic as the matrix. Okay, ceramic as the matrix and maybe we can combine with metal inside. Okay, hmm. metal or Uh, ceramic with ceramic, ceramic with another ceramic because ceramic uh, as a matrix cannot be combined with polymer because uh, ceramic uh, is very high temperature. Okay, so in this case, ceramic matrix composite, ceramics are dominant. Uh, during the processing, we are going to heat up this material up to processing for ceramic materials. Then we are going to put the reinforcement in. Okay, if let's say you put polymer during 1000 degrees celsius for example so polymer will totally burn okay so you cannot use polymer as the re uh, reinforcement in ceramic so that's why in ceramic matrix composite they use ceramic with ceramic okay ceramic as a reinforcement inside the ceramic uh, matrix or they put metal in ceramic so the function is basically uh, uh, to um, reduce okay the brittleness of the ceramic materials So Fadilah, uh, saya akan terangkan dengan lebih lanjut esok bila kita bincang bahagian uh, ceramic matrix composite. Okay. Yeah. So, Tapi yeah. untuk, uh, yeah, tujuan utamanya adalah untuk mengurangkan uh, kerapuhan, yeah, kerapuhan, yeah, yeah. kerapuhan bahan ceramik itu. Sebab, yeah. sebab itu dimasukkan uh, reinforcement di dalam tu untuk menghasilkan ceramic matrix composite. Okay. Okay, thank you for Professor. Uh, bagaimana Fadilah? Dah terjawab ke Fadila? Mana Fadila? Sudah. Fadila. Oh ya, yeah. okay, sudah. Ada yang lain? Any anyone else? You can ask in Indonesian language. Don't ah, be boleh. shy. Don't, don't be shy. shy. <laughs> ah, don't be shy. I understand. Yeah. Uh, bahasa Indonesia. Kos Prof Mariati punya banyak teman orang Indonesia. Ya, ya. Silakan. Ya, Wesley. Silakan. Eh, siapa? Megan ya? Megan, Bu. Megan, ya. Selamat selamat pagi. Ya, ya, selamat pagi. Ini Ibu, uh, terima kasih karena saya telah diberikan kesempatan pada untuk bertanya pada hari ini. Uh, perkenalkan sebelumnya, Bu. Saya Megan Cecilia Farel dengan NIM 22008. Uh, izin bertanya bu, izin bertanya menggunakan bahasa Indonesia ya ibu. Ya, boleh. Jadi, seperti ini bu, saya uh, terkait dengan advance material tadi, saya uh, cukup interesting dengan itu material on the future, yaitu tentang nanomaterial tadi. Um, kita tadi kita tadi hmm. sudah menjela, um, mendengarkan materi yaitu tentang processing yang mana berhubungan dengan uh, struktur maupun uh, sampai ke performance properties nah seperti itu bu nah jadi uh, un, yang mana kita tahu bahwa produk-produk yang tentang menggunakan nanomaterial adalah seperti oli mesin pasta gigi dan lain sebagainya bu namun Uh, untuk di era yang sekarang, apakah memungkinkan uh, advance material ini, uh, yaitu nanomaterial ini, Bu, uh, kita ubah strukturnya untuk menjadi uh, benda padat gitu, Bu. Jadi seperti dia 
uh, awalnya yang untuk benda-benda future gitu bu masa depan apakah itu memungkinkan bu dan kalau memungkinkan apakah sudah ada ya bu pengaplikasiannya seperti itu bu terima kasih oke okay. um, soalannya agak susah ya ibu Alima <laughs> Ya, co coba saya ini kan ya, Prof. Uh, ya, ya. Uh, kan uh, selama ini kan kalau kayak di pasta gigi kan suka ada um, apa itu? Apa istilahnya di sini ya? Uh, iklan ya? Ap iklan apa ya? E kalau iklan itu bilang uh, ada nano partikel insa. Ah, okay, so okay. it can ah, ah, ah. Um, apa? Masuk ke gigi itu lebih uh, lebih sempurna. Ah, sempurna. ya ya ya. Betul, Terus betul. Di, apa lagi ha? So what the different lah dengan yang uh, hmm. apa ya dengan okay. um, advanced matrix eh, advanced hmm. uh, material yang Prof baru sampaikan. Oke oke. Untuk nano material, oke. Okay, um, Memang sekarang kalau anak-anak uh, lihat uh, iklan pun, dia ada banyak di, di, dinyatakan contohnya macam tadilah dalam plaster gigi ada dinyatakan uh, ada mengandungi nanopartikel sebagai contoh. Dalam kosmetik pun ada dinyatakan ada nano silver, ada nano gold, macam-macam kan. Uh, dalam macam-macam uh, application contohnya, Uh, dalam uh, ekon, okay, dalam ekon ada di ekon tu AC ya, uh, AC, uh, uh, AC uh, air conditioning ya, yeah. uh, okay. Uh, ada disembuhkan uh, nanopartikel contohnya hmm. nanotitania untuk mengurangkan bakteria daripada grow sebagai contoh kan. Nah, banyak kita lihat uh, dalam produk sekarang penggunaan nanopartikel, okay. Um, nanopartikel adalah uh, nanostructure ni sangat bagus uh, properties dia dan kita boleh ubah structure dia okey sebagai contoh ya kalau pelajar lihat carbon uh, okey carbon carbon kalau pelajar google akan ada bentuk dia carbon nanotubes okey dia ada bentuk grafin okey grafin tu maksudnya dia satu layer saja uh, carbon dia satu layer saja kalau carbon nanotube uh, dia ada satu layer tetapi dia boleh roll up uh, dia boleh bergulung dan jadi tube Okay. Jadi kalau kita ada banyak layer-layer carbon and then dia bergulung, kita akan dapat multi-wall carbon nanotube. Jadi kalau pelajar lihat, uh, berbagai structure ni okay, dengan uh, struktur yang berbeza yang bergulung ataupun yang satu layer carbon tadi, propertiesnya tu berbeza. Okay, properties berbeza. Dia akan mempengaruhi conductivity yang berbeza, strength berbeza, Uh, density berbeza dan sebagainya. Okay, jadi uh, advantage uh, nanoparticles ni adalah kita boleh modify the structure okay, untuk mendapat hasil yang berbeza-beza. Okay. Contohnya katalah titania, TiO2. TiO2 di di sini, di di, di uh, USM ini, kita ada researcher yang boleh menghasilkan TiO2 bentuknya jarum. Okay. Ada yang boleh menghasilkan TiO2 bentuknya bunga-bunga. Okay. Ada yang menghasilkan dalam bentuk uh, tube. Okay. So pelbagai bentuk nanotube ini, uh, nanopartikel ini, dia akan menghasilkan sifat-sifat yang berbeza-beza. Okay. Jadi that's why uh, itu adalah satu advantage uh, research dalam nanomaterial di mana saiznya terlalu kecil. Okay, saiznya kecil. Bila saiznya kecil, dia akan menghasilkan sifat yang sangat bagus. Okay, sifat yang sangat bagus. That's why kita boleh addkan dalam uh, penggunaan, kita boleh masukkan dalam produk-produk tertentu dalam kuantiti yang sedikit saja. Hmm. Ha, kita tak perlu kuantiti yang besar. Hmm. Kalau kita guna micron size, sebagai contoh kalau katalah uh, saiznya 20 micrometer. Okay, kita perlu masukkan mungkin 20% ataupun 30% untuk dapat properties tertentu tetapi kalau nanopartikel kita cuma masukkan 2% sahaja. Okey 2% sahaja dan kita akan dapat properties yang sama. Okey. Ha, jadi itu adalah advantage nanopartikel dan kalau pelajar lihat makin banyak penggunaan uh, nano structure particles ni dalam produk sekarang. Bukan setakat untuk uh, kosmetik dan sebagainya untuk medical application pun uh, banyak menggunakan nanopartikel sekarang elektronik memang sekarang ke arah penggunaan nanopartikel. Okay. Jadi itu adalah antara uh, advantage 
nanopartikels lah disebabkan saiznya yang kecil dan dia akan meningkatkan properties uh, tertentu lah yang kita kendaki. That's why kita panggil dia advanced material. Yeah. Boleh ya, Farah? Bagaimana, Megan? Ya, Bu, baik. Terima kasih. Saya sudah bisa. Ah, Megan. Ah, okay, okay. Okay. Terima kasih. Yeah. Korban iklan juga kita ya, Megan ya. Iya. <laughs> yeah. Silakan teman-teman yang lain. Stephen, mana Stephen? Ayo, Bapak Komting kita. Silakan, ada yang mau ditanyakan pada Prof. Mariati? Mana Izin. Stephen? Hadir, Bu. Ya, yeah. ada? Silakan. Izin, Bu. Dari saya tidak ada, Bu. Oke, okay. yang lain? Izin, Bu. Ya. Yeah. Uh... Kenalkan uh, Bu, Milda. nama saya Wildan Mofaili dengan NIM 2204-05-068. Jadi saya ingin bertanya Bu, pada pembuatan keramik tradisional setelah keramik jadi seperti bentuk yang kita inginkan, keramik dibakar kembali eh, Tidak dengar ya, Bildan. Uh, macamnya dia apa ini? Uh. Jaringannya. Bildan? Iya, Bu. Jaringan, Bu. Iya. Uh, silakan, okay. silakan. Teruskan. Jadi, di sini saya baca pembakaran kedua itu dilakukan dengan tingkat kepanasan yaitu 1220. Hilang deh. <laughs> Hilang terus. Hilang. Oke, okay, sebentar lagi dia masuk. Ada yang lain nanti disambung sama Wildan. Silakan. Alvin. Uh, izin, Bu. Kalau dari saya tidak ada, Bu. Oke, okay, yang lain. Ayo, ini kesempatan kita untuk uh, meningkatkan pengetahuan terutama tentang ceramik ini. Silakan bertanya. Ada? Kita tunggu si Wildan sebentar. Ya. Pak Aris, silakan. Uh, uh, ya. Prof. Halima, ini pelajar-pelajar tahun berapa ya? Tahun 1, Prof. Oh, tahun 1. agak masih malu-malu ya. Aha. Farid, silakan Farid. Pasti, Bu. Izin sebelumnya, izin memperkenalkan diri. Perkenalkan, nama saya Muhammad Farid Alwi dengan NIM 2297. Di sini saya ingin bertanya, di mana tadi uh, ada keramik dicampur dengan aluminium, nikel, sehingga terbentuklah uh, komposit, uh, komposit baru. Nah, aluminium nikel tersebut kan bisa teroksidasi atau berkarat, Bu. Apakah dicampur dengan keramik itu bisa berkarat? Uh, dan terkontaminasi dengan bahan lainnya, Bu. Terima kasih, Bu. Ya, yeah. uh, ya, yeah. um, Farid. Um, ceramic material uh, adalah uh, dia boleh wujud dalam bentuk oksida, okay, oxide, uh, nitrite, okay. Uh, jadi uh, kalau kita ingin menghasilkan ceramic composite, okay, kita boleh campurkan um, katalah uh, aluminium oxide sebagai base, ya. Yeah. Okay, ceramik dan kita boleh masuk ke metal di dalam itu. Okay, um, tetapi seperti yang kita tahu uh, dia bergantung kepada apa fungsi uh, tujuan untuk kita lakukan pencampuran tersebut. Okay, uh, dalam penggunaan uh, tertentu, okay kita kita memang tahu um, oksid tu uh, contohnya katalah aluminium. Bila kita campurkan aluminium, aluminium akan oksida, dia akan teroksid. Okey, jadi dia akan lama-lama uh, aluminium tu daripada metal dia akan bertukar menjadi ceramic material sebab oxidation. Okey, jadi um, bergantung kepada tujuan uh, kita lakukan pencampuran tersebut. Kalau katalah kita hendak menghasilkan sesuatu produk uh, yang kita tidak kisah apabila metal tu berkarat ataupun berlaku pengoksidaan dan dia tidak ada isu lah di situ. Okay. Tetapi uh, sebab bila 
metal tu oksidais dan dia akan menghasilkan menjadi bahan seramik juga. Okay. Tetapi kalau katalah penggunaan itu kita tidak mahu uh, ada oxidation. Okay. Se seharusnya kita menggunakan metal yang tidak oksidais bila kita lakukan pencampuran. Ha, contohnya kita gunakan titanium. Okay. Kenapa titanium uh, kita gunakan dalam badan kita? Sebab titanium uh, dia tidak akan berlaku uh, pengoksidaan dengan cepat. Okay, jadi dia sangat sesuai. Jadi bergantung kepada formulasi di mana kita nak guna, kita lakukan, kita buat pemilihan bahan yang bersesuaian dan kita lakukan composite material. Okay. Ha, maksudnya di sini kita Farid perlu tahu penggunaan apa, di mana kita nak gunakan produk tersebut dan daripada situ kita buat material selection okay, dan kita baru kita hasilkan produk yang kita anda hasilkan. Okay. Uh, kalau um, semasa penggunaan itu kita tidak uh, kita uh, apa itu pengaratan itu bukan satu isu yang besar dan kita boleh lakukan uh, combination antara metal biasa dengan ceramik. Tetapi sekiranya pengaratan itu penting kita tidak mahu berlaku pengaratan uh, semasa penggunaan dan kita menggunakan metal yang yang tahan karat bersama dengan ceramic materials okey dan terhasilnya ceramic uh, composite ha, seperti itu ya. boleh ya Farid? Farid ya jadi hmm. tergantung kepada aplikasinya nanti ya hmm. sehingga kita bisa memilih pengisi atau bahan apa yang mau dicampur ke bahan keramik kita hmm. jadi faktor-faktor uh, yang mempengaruhi proses pengaratan itu harus kita perhatikan juga untuk Uh, apa pengisi dari bahan keramiknya silakan hmm. makasih Prof silakan yang lain Wildan Ada. tadi belum masuk lagi ya Wildan <laughs> Wildan iya kasihan dia mungkin uh, jari internetnya dulu. tidak bagus Wildan ah, sudah ada Wildan. yang tu Wildan apa ya, tadi silakan. pembakaran pembakaran ya gimana uh, Wildan nah. ya bu pembakaran kedua kan dilakukan dengan uh, tinggi panas yaitu 1220 derajat celcius mm -hmm. dan selama 10 jam. Kenapa lamanya 10 jam? Kenapa tinggi kepanasannya 1220 derajat? <laughs> ya. Tinggi sangat yeah. ya Wildan ya dan lama ya. Ya, mungkin itulah kenapa uh, suhu apa kondisi prosesnya itu demikian tinggi dan lama, Prof. Mungkin itu pertanyaan Wildan. Prof. Aha. Sebab Wildan perlu uh, perlu ingat ya bahan seramik ini uh, dia uh, suhu kita perlukan suhu yang tinggi, okay? Perlukan suhu tinggi. Uh, tujuan apa kita masuk kita lakukan pembakaran adalah supaya partikel tu tadi akan diffuse, akan bercantum antara satu sama lain dan dia menjadi kuat. Okey, sebab uh, sebelum itu katalah kita menghasilkan tradisional ceramik kita gunakan roda potter tu, kan? Ya, bila kita nak menghasilkan apa ya di sana ya labu sayung itu dipanggil apa ya labu itu untuk kita masukkan Gerabah, air itu. Raba, kendi, kendi. Aha, ya? kendi. Ah, ya. Macam tu, ya. Okey, jadi kita hasilkan uh, bentuk produknya tu macam kendi seperti itu. Uh, dan di situ kita kena ingat partikelnya adalah masih lagi dalam keadaan partikel-partikel, okay, partikel-partikel tidak bercantum, okay. Jadi kita kena keringkan dahulu, okay, untuk keluarkan sebilangan persen air dan baru kita bakarkan dia, okay. Bila kita lakukan pembakaran, kita perlu lakukan suhu yang tinggi supaya nanti partikel-partikel kita tu akan diffuse dan bercantum antara satu sama lain, okay. Tanpa kita lakukan pembakaran pada suhu yang tinggi dan lama dan partikel itu tidak akan bercantum. Jadi bila kita masukkan air di dalam itu, air itu akan cepat meresap keluar. Okey. Ah jadi di sebab tu kita hendak partikel tu bercantum dan uh, dia menjadi betul-betul cantik dan kurang rongga-rongga di dalam struktur tersebutlah. Ah so mereka telah buat kajian uh, mungkin 10 jam uh, sesuai untuk menyebabkan partikel tu diffuse dan bercantum. Okay. So sebelum kita lakukan apa-apa 
parameter uh, masa processing ni uh, biasanya kita perlu lakukan kajian. Mungkin 5 jam telah dibuat, 10 jam, 20 jam dan sebagainya. Didapati 10 jam tu adalah paling bagus untuk uh, hmm. dapatkan partikel yang bercantum dan mendapatkan hasil yang kuat. Ha, jadi macam itulah so, Suhu tinggi itu memang biasa Kalau uh, Wildan tengok Processing hmm. untuk ceramic Memang 1200, 1300, 2000 tu memang biasa Untuk ceramic materials hmm. Ya Wildan? Boleh ya? Boleh ya. Ya. Mungkin boleh ditambah Prof uh, faktor untuk Penekanan ya Prof Salah satunya juga kan tekanan itu penting ya karena tadi Prof ada cerita perihal rongga supaya kalau hmm. di press dia kan itu juga salah satu hmm. upaya untuk membuat material itu compact gitu jadi itu uh, jadi uh, uh. Yeah. So, dia, so dia ada dua method tadi ya kalau pelajar masih ingat kita ada wet method dengan dry method hmm. uh, dry method tu yang powder so kalau powder hmm. tu kita akan lakukan penekanan dahulu okay hmm. supaya nanti partikel tu dalam keadaan compact sebelum kita lakukan hmm. pembakaran Okay. Tetapi uh, bila kita buat pottery, uh, yeah. apa tu kendi tadi, biasanya kita yeah. buat wet casting. Okay. Yeah. So bila wet casting, kita cuma, um, kita tidak ada uh, penekanan yang terlibat press di sini. Ya. Uh, press jadi ya. uh, pressnya tu tak ada sebab kita dah shapekan dia bentuk tertentu kan. Mm -hmm. uh, jadi kita cuma keringkan dan masuk dalam uh, tanur ataupun fenis untuk dibakar mm -hmm. pada suhu yang lama disebab tu di situ kita perlu suhu yang lama nak suhu tinggi dan masa yang lama sebab nak bagi dia mm. compact tu. Ha, kalau kita buat dry process dan kita sudah compactkan dia. Ha, so bila kita compactkan mm -hmm. dia uh, udara tu memang sudah terkeluar dan partikel tu dah kadang rapat-rapat dan lepas tu kita boleh um, apa tu bakarkan teruslah. Ha. So pelajar kena tengok dua teknik yang berbeza tadilah. Uh, wet dengan dry. Okay. Dry. Right, yeah. uh, kita ini kan ada recordnya ya. Nanti juga saya akan share uh, recordnya supaya teman-teman uh, nanti bisa mengulang ya apa-apa uh, yang disampaikan supaya lebih clear lagi. Silakan. Hmm. Ada lagi yang lain yang mau uh, menanyakan terkait topik kita hari ini kepada Prof uh, Mariati? Ada. Daniel. Vera, banyak di sini nih. Ayo. Kalau malu di chat juga boleh. Nanti ibu kita bacakan. Silakan. Bagaimana? Cukup? Kelas ya? di sana okay. masih lagi online ke? Prof. Halimah? Uh, sudah, sudah ada yang so, offline, face -face. beberapa sudah ah. uh, off offline, mm. tapi mm. masih diperbolehkan juga uh, oh. online, Prof. Uh, okay, yeah. okay. Ini karena kita gabungan tiga kelas dan Prof mm. pun uh, mm. memang keinginannya Prof ke sini ya, tapi kan yeah, yeah. keinginannya <laughs> ke sana. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh. <laughs> Jadi virtual saja dulu, Prof. Mudah-mudahan tahun depan kalau memang apa boleh kita lakukan secara Uh, offline ya Prof. Ya ya ya. So jadi besok ya uh, hmm. topik kita lanjutan terkait dengan komposit ya teman-teman yeah. ya uh, hmm. bahan juga sudah di uh, share silahkan dibaca juga ya mana tahu nanti setelah penyampaian ada hal yang mau ditanyakan ya kita punya punya waktu hanya dua hari ini saja untuk um, menanyakan yang hal-hal yang ya tentunya untuk menambah ya pengetahuan kita terkait uh, bahasan kita ini jadi uh, coba ditanyakan saja uh, insya Allah Prof Mariati bisa me 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 menerangkannya ya supaya kalian juga lebih memahaminya Baik itu saja saya rasa pertemuan kita pagi hari ini ya. Terima kasih teman-teman semuanya terutama kepada Profesor Mariati yang sudah uh, berhadir dan menyampaikan uh, lecturernya kepada kita semuanya. Mudah-mudahan besok kita uh, sehat-sehat dan bisa bertemu kembali untuk uh, sesi yang kedua di jam yang sama. Oke, okay. terima kasih ya Prof Mariati. Sehat-sehat yes. kita jumpa besok. Terima kasih banyak. Ya, sama-sama Ibu Halimah. Ya, terima kasih semua anak-anak. Uh, so, boleh baca uh, nota yang diberikan. Kalau ada soalan, kita boleh bincang esok ya.
Okay. Dan itu juga keadilan sosial mengandung arti yaitu <laughs> ada yang bocor. <laughs> ya, ya Prof. Ya, oke, 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 oke. Oke ya, saya tutup ya. Oke, assalamualaikum. Saya sehat. Selamat pagi. Saya sehat ya. Besok pagi jangan lupa. 8.50 sudah. Ya, sudah mulai masuk. Ibu tutup ya. Oke, Ibu. Terima kasih Ibu. Baik Bu. Terima kasih.